but changing the world can happen anywhere and anyone can do it. So what starts here can indeed change the world. But the question is, what will the world look like after you change it? That was now retired four-star Navy Admiral William McRaven in 2014, encouraging college graduates to lead the next generation towards a better future. Admiral McRaven's nearly 40-year military career included time as a Navy SEAL and commander of all U.S. Special Operations Forces. He advised Presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama and is best known for overseeing the raid that ended with the death of Osama bin Laden. His new book is called The Wisdom of the Bullfrog, Leadership Made Simple But Not Easy. He writes about lessons he learned over decades as a leader. Admiral William McRaven, good to see you again, sir. Yeah, good to be here. Thanks. So this book is called The Leadership, The Wisdom of the Bullfrog. What does it mean to be a bullfrog? Yeah. So the bullfrog is the title given to the longest serving Navy SEAL on active duty. So uh, in 2011, I was uh, given the title of the bullfrog. But remember, we are first and foremost Navy frogmen. So when okay. you are the oldest serving or the longest serving frogman, you are the bullfrog. Got you. So, so, so what, are the, what I love about this book is that you've got the usual suspects like von Clausewitz yep, and, and Moltke the Elder, not to be confused with Moltke the Younger, but, but you also have Taylor Swift that you quote. You also yeah. have Oprah Winfrey that you quote in the book. But I was really moved by the chapter on when it's time to command, you command. And I was right. relating to you a story when I was an Army cadet in, in, at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and I ran, I took my platoon directly into the line of a sniper fire, this is simulated, obviously, and I got a satisfactory by the cadre officer, and he said, you know, rather than sitting down while the sniper was taking pot shots at you, you ran, you made a decision, and you told your team to execute that decision. It moved me what you wrote about. It. Explain what Nimitz faced during right. the Battle of Midway. Yeah, yeah so this, uh, the story takes place in 1942, June 1942, and, uh, and Nimitz is debating whether or not he's going to move the Pacific Fleet to engage the Japanese at Midway. And, and the intelligence is not very clear. So he is, you know, has the, the real anxiety of what should I do, what should I do? Well, he goes to visit Admiral Bull Halsey, who is in the hospital, and Bull Halsey was notoriously kind of gruff and, uh, and he's kind of confiding to Halsey that uh, he just doesn't know what to do. And Halsey turns to him and says, sir, you told me one time, when in command, command. Hmm. And the point being, when you're in charge, when you're the leader, you have to take decisive steps sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be prepared to make decisions. The rank and file want you to show them that you have a plan. They want you to be decisive. Uh, and sometimes, even when your decisions are wrong, uh, they will appreciate the fact that you moved out with, you know, a certain amount of confidence. And that's, that's the point of that chapter. Admiral, yeah. let me ask you a question about when you're in leadership. How do you keep from getting insulated and isolated? People live in their bubbles now. They do. How do you fight that to make sure you're getting good information so you can make that call? Yeah, so it, it really does. The culture's got to start at the top. So as a leader, you've got to make sure that the men and women that work for you understand that you're prepared to hear bad news. And, and you've got to do that by when your staff comes together, you let them know, look, if I'm doing something wrong, if I'm about to walk into a minefield, whether it's, it's uh, virtual or realistic, then please tell me, engage me. If you do not do that, if you create kind of a, a toxic work environment and people are afraid to come to you, then you're going to make a lot of mistakes because your people aren't telling you ground truth. Now, despite your accomplishments, uh, highly respected, highly decorated, you're, you say that you're still learning how to be a better leader. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How is that? Well, every single day. I mean, the fact of the matter is, Nate, as you, you well know, uh, no matter what you're doing, every single day, you better be prepared to learn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and leadership is a journey. And so every single day, I mean, when I was a Navy SEAL, when I ran the University of Texas uh, system, uh, even today, outside of both of those realms, I'm learning. I'm learning from my students. I teach at the University of Texas LBJ School. I learn from my millennials and Gen Zs how to be a better leader. So. Yeah, you learn every single day. Makes sense. And I want to know what you learned in that raid to kill Osama bin Laden, because mm -hmm. you said there were 165 <laughs> phases that went into the planning. Every possible oh. scenario was explored. Right. How did that change you? Well, you know, fortunately, by the time the raid comes along, I had been a Navy SEAL for a very long time. Uh, and, you know, you've got to do a couple things. One, it's going to be risky. So you want to work hard to plan the risk out of it. The fact of the matter is, uh, you know, they never show it in the movies, they never talk about it in the books, but about three quarters of the mission is spent planning right. because you want to kind of reduce the risk uh, to the least possible level. But then you also have to trust the men and women that work for you. You know, you've got to give them the right tools to do the job, you've got to give them the training to do the job, 
And then you've got to give them the latitude to go out and do the job. And I, I trusted the men that were working for me on that mission. And obviously, they, uh, they did what was expected. Now, uh, you know, there's so many reasons why people should read this book, but chapter 10 is one of my favorites. I'm not necessarily a Swifty, yeah. but this quote by Taylor Swift. <laughs> I know, it's hardcore. Is, it's everything. <laughs> Just because you made a good plan doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. Right. And that's the yeah. chapter, No Plan Survives First Contact with the Enemy. That is powerful. Yeah. And how, how much is that important to you that you have to understand that a good plan doesn't always work initially? Well, and in fact, uh, the story starts off with me as a Navy midshipman. And, and this was the Moltke reference. The fact of the matter is you learn very early on in the military that no plan, you can make the best plan in the world, but the enemy gets a vote. And so no plan survives first contact with the enemy. Admiral McRaven, always great to have you, sir. Thank you very much. The Wisdom of the Bullfrogs is on sale today. We'll be right back.